everybody. Hi, it's quilt nerd time. Oh my God. Um, so if you're new here, and I know we have a couple new people, and that's really great. I saw Karen and Sammy. Hey, hi, oh, I'm so glad that you said hello. We have lurkers, uh, the, the lurker lounge is full of delightful people. I know a few of them. Um, and uh, they, don't, they don't normally chat, you know, they lurk. And I, lo I love that about them. I dig that, I can dig that. Um, and it, it's not that they're wallflowers, you know, they're just like, they're cool. They got their sunglasses on, they're smoking, they don't, they just, you know. So, uh, but, but when people uh, come by and say hello, and certainly the, the chatters in the chat who we love so much, who keep the conversation going, and, and uh, I, I mean, we, we love everybody. And so Sammy and Karen, I'm so glad you said hi. Hello, Kenny. Hello, Stitch and Deb. Oh my God, Myra, thank you so much. You've been subscribed for 21 months. And Joyce, you subscribed, you've been subscribed for 10 months. That's amazing. Babe's here. Hey, babe. Mm. Um, Eva and El Riggs and Kate. Hey, Kate, how are you? Yvonne is here. Um, Bridgewater and Bip. Bip, it's so good to see you too. And Stephanie Cake is here and Robin is here. And who else is here? I mean, there's people here. Sammy Starlight, what a great name. Um, I see Eva, I see Padma. I'm loving this. So, 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 so it's uh, Saturday night and um, it's been quite a week. It's been a week. And um, I've got a great show for you tonight. Here on Quilt Nerd, if, if you're new here, and I know we have new people, but you might just be new in the chat. Maybe you've been watching the show for a while, maybe not. But Quilt Nerd is um, an exploration of quilt culture in the United States and beyond. Um, it's not a show where you learn how to make quilts. We don't do that. Uh, we talk about what quilts mean and why they matter. And we talk about quilts sort of in the world, right? Beyond the quilt world, beyond the, the industry, beyond the commercial side of things. Um, like tonight, we're gonna look at um, a couple art shows. Uh, Gary Tyler, I don't know if any of you know about him, but he's a fascinating character. Um, fascinating person um, who was wrongly incarcerated for decades, many decades, I think 43 years, is that right? Um, and he has his first solo show, he's a quilter. Um, amazing story. <clears throat> so we're gonna talk about him. Uh, we've never really looked at the red and white infinite variety exhibit that happened in 2011, I believe. So we're gonna look at a few images from that. Um, and you know, I, you know, I, I miss cultural moments so often. I really do. And I, and I thought to myself, Mary, don't miss Barbenheimer. Don't miss it. Don't do, don't, because sometimes culture just surprises me. Okay, sometimes I'm like, ah, that's great. Like, like uh, jorts, you know, jorts that, I, I loved jorts. I still love jorts. If you don't know what jorts is, just Google it. Okay, jorts the cat, Ama amazing. She buttered jorts. I mean, I, I loved jorts. Um, and I loved- Jorts, jorts yes. completes me. Jorts, jorts com completes me. Yes, Stephanie Cake, by the way. Stephanie Cake, everybody. Um, I just closed my thing. How did I do that? Um, Steph, so so you, okay, so so Barbie Barbenheimer, if you haven't, oh no, did I just, I just did something. I just did something. Did I log out of Zoom? How is that possible? Oh my God. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry, Stephanie. Um, I, I er, 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 yeah, I saw, here we go. I saw Oppenheimer and Steph saw Barbie, okay? So if you don't know what the Barbieheimer thing is, you probably do, but the Barbie movie is out and it's just, you know, it's everywhere. And Oppenheimer, the movie is out about Oppenheimer. So people are going to both and it's like this double feature and I think it's very funny. I love it. Here we go. Okay, I think I got you back. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, here we are. Sorry. Uh, I tried to turn the volume up and that's what I get. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so I- Good. Yeah, yes, okay. yes. We, we, did, we did the opposite ends of yes. this cultural spectrum yes. that is the, in the zeitgeist. Yes. And, and how, what did you think about Barbie? What did you think? <laughs> I have so many feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, 
number of the nerds have already seen it. I think there were folks that went like the first weekend. Oh. Um, I would say if I can, if I am only allowed one sentence, I would say it was a cute movie. It had lots of funny, great moments. Um, probably could have been better written for all its hype. But. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. And and I saw Oppenheimer, and I I loved Oppenheimer, but but I, and I didn't see Barbie because I just I just I don't know I couldn't handle it. I just was like I can't do this. But um, I saw Oppenheimer and I loved it. But the reason that I loved it is because I loved it when I got out. I was like, that was really good. And then I called my sister, Rebecca, to ask her if I should go see Barbie, because Rebecca, she knows movies like nobody. She's Gene Siskel, film center director, you know, program director. She really, she goes to Cannes. I mean, she's a big deal. So I was like, should I see Barbie? Anyway, she said, what did you think of Oppenheimer, whatever. And so when I got on the phone with her and I talked about Oppenheimer, she was like, that was a piece of I just hated it, like, like it was so bad. She was like, this is a problem, this is a problem. And I was like, oh, you're right, you're so right. Oh my God, that was terrible. Oh, I didn't even see it. I hated it. I absolutely hated that movie. That movie was terrible. So I love Oppenheimer because I loved it. And then I talked to my sister and I learned that I hated it. So I loved it. <laughs> I love the experience, you know? Anyway. Um, she needs to stop ruining movies for us. I know, I know. she didn't like Barbie either, anyway. Um, so she's like, I see brilliant movies all the time. These are bad movies that you're, you, that are out there. Anyway. Um, but she's not a snob because she loves Tom Cruise. She loves Tom Cruise movies and we're going to go see Mission Impossible. She loves Tom Cruise. She's like, he's America's movie star. <laughs> anyway, she's amazing. Uh, Jan makes up. Thank you so much for subscribing at tier two. You've been subscribed for 18 months. Today I was working on, uh, mailing tier two and tier three people, their special gifts. Um, and yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Hey, Jill. Hey, Molly. Um, Tom Cruise. No, word and bird nerd. You're not into it. Hey, Saucy Stitcher. Um, yes. Yes, exactly. Chris Nolan. I know. Rebecca said he makes movies for himself to show how smart he is. <laughs> Rebecca needs to come on the show. I've been telling her. All right, let's get into this. Um, and uh, you're not released yet from the Barbie Heimer thing, but don't worry. I will not punish you with like small, I mean, I will not punish you with like pink quilts, but I was thinking about, you know, the cultural moment. And I was like, okay, I could do like a pink quilt or I could find a Barbie quilt. I looked, there's nothing. But then I thought, how about a doll quilt? Oh, a doll quilt. And this lovely little quilt, I don't really know. Oh, it's it, okay. It's at the International Quilt Museum collection because I see a collection number on it. This quilt was made by Bess Ramsey, the great quilt scholar, Bess Ramsey. Yeah, yeah. And, and she made it uh, in 1995. And Bess Ramsey, Bess Ramsey turned 100 recently. 100, right? 100 years old. And she is, uh, she's very special, very special person. Um, my thing is sort of doing something weird. Um, and she... Yeah, she made this and she's a really talented quilt maker and she's also uh, a delightful person. When we interviewed her for Quilt Folk, she, uh, we, we went to Nashville where she lives and, and when I was setting up the interview, she said, well, that sounds really nice. Can we go get barbecue after? I was like, yes, Bets Ramsey, we can go get barbecue after. So she's cool. Um, yeah, so this is, this is a doll quilt by Bets, Bets Ramsey. I don't know, my, my acorn thing is being a little bit jerky. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's all right. Um, yeah. So doll quilt. Pretty simple. <laughs> Pretty simple. But the thing is, I can't spend too long on this because because I was going to pick a different one. And, and by the way, this is a spider web quilt. Sorry, sorry. This is a spider web quilt um, uh, made by, made very simply by making wedges. Yeah, let's analyze this a little bit. Hang on. I don't like that my, usually it's a real smooth ride, you know, but it's doing something kind of strange. Sometimes it does, it's all right. Um, so so ha have you ever made a spider web quilt? Do you know about this? So, you, so you, can you see these pie wedges? Like if you kind of like, you know, if you try to see them, you can probably see them, that there's these, these you know, uh, triangles that come into a point. And it's basically, it's paper piecing. I mean, that's the way I've made a, a, a spider web quilt. It's paper, right, Steph? Yeah, you can paper piece it, like a foundation piecing. I've made them using like a one of the triangles, like make it a strip, like a strip quilt. Oh, like, yeah. 
a strip set mm -hmm. and then use the like the specific like mm -hmm. I can, whatever that angle is i'm bad with um, that, but whatever that angle is yeah 60 30 60? 45 i don't know <laughs> yeah one of those <laughs> anyway whatever that whatever that degree they make the special rulers mm -hmm. and so i've, I've yeah. made one that way yeah yeah and they're really fun i mean what i like to do when i made one was i mean i just here we go um I just had so many strips. I had so many scraps and you just sew them on. I did it the foundation way. And then you just, yeah, you just slice and slice and dice and it's it's great. It's a great way to use up scraps. And I love the way she quilted this. She's got kind of a spider web thing going on with this hand quilting, it looks like. So really nice, really nice. A little doll quilt, little doll quilt to start the show. But I picked it because I've been a bit, uh, you know, I've, I don't know, I've been, you know, got the summer summer doldrums maybe, summer blues a bit. And so I needed something kind of energetic behind me. And this is, it's very, it's an intuitive thing when I pick the intro quilt, I'm telling you. So the original quilt that I had to start out the show lost to this one. Um, but I want to show you the other one. <laughs> this is the one I picked when I was like, Bleh. like, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's not an upper, you know what I mean? I mean, that's Ramsey's doll quilt. Like, hello, that's what I went with. But I also wanted to show you this because, because this is a quilt from Yannick and Smucker's uh, Amish quilts. And We'll have a link in the chat. Steph will put a link in the chat if you want to buy this book. And it is really good. It's very, very good. I can show you the cover. If it has green in it, you won't see it. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, Amish Quilts, <clears throat> Crafting an American Icon by Yannick and Smucker. So uh, it was published in, it's a beautiful book, by the way. Who did publish this? The John Johns Hopkins University Press in Baltimore. Hey, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, and she did a great job. And it's very, I mean, it's got so much text and ephemera, you know, images of ephemera, published in 2013. So anyway, so this quilt was made in 1900 by Elizabeth Kaufman Hirschberger. And, um, <clears throat> okay, I'm just gonna hold this here. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to show it because, I mean, for one thing, you know, one of the things Smucker talks about is how, you know, we have this idea, people have this idea of the classic Amish quilt, right? And, and I do, I mean, the diamond in the square, you know, the bars and stuff, but just like, you know, the African-American quilt or the, well, I mean, even the Baltimore album quilt, we've seen some Baltimore albums that are just like totally different, you know? I mean, they have the same kind of structure, but like they're really different. Same thing with Amish quilts, and it's really interesting to read her deep research and experience, because I believe she grew up Mennonite, or near a Mennonite community. Don't quote me on that, but I, I believe so. Um, she had Mennonite folks in her family. So anyway, so when I think about Amish quilts, I think, you know, what you probably think, which is like straight lines, four colors, you know, very simple, very plain. But then you have this quilt, which is, this has got some you know, almost crazy piecing or crazy quilt, I mean. Um, but certain improvisational piecing, you could call it intuitive piecing, you know, scrappy, really scrappy. And Amish quilts <clears throat> that we usually talk about, like in the Esprit collection, um, you know, don't really look like this, but there are a number of them. And in fact, yeah, I mean, the, this, this book is full of a few of them. I mean, this has some of them. And so I wanted to share this, uh, little bit about this <clears throat> or some of the text that's near this near this uh, this quilt <laughs> it's really interesting so she's talking about uh, the heyday of collecting Amish quilts and the dealers and the you know when when Amish quilts were really really hot um, you know 19 in the 1980s certainly so okay <clears throat> a quilt's age was important but unlike the rule with most antiques, older was not simply better and thus more valuable because many collectors and dealers in the 1970s were more interested, okay, 1970s, in the aesthetic value of these quilts than in the documentation regarding their age, much of the knowledge about dates was simply speculative. 
In a 1979 interview, a Philadelphia dealer compared two hypothetical quilts pieced in the same pattern, one dated 1880 and one dated 1910. Quote, if they are both in the same condition, the one that is most pleasing optically brings the higher price, he said, suggesting that aesthetics could trump age. More important than how old a quilt was was how new it was. Starting with the earliest writings on the subjects, authors articulated a classic era for Amish quilt making. The first book focusing on Amish quilts, Robert Bishop and Elizabeth Safanda's Gallery of Amish Quilts in 1976, offered this range 1870 to 1935. These authors did not provide any evidence for these dates in their text. Only seven of the 156 quilts pictured had quilted or embroidered dates, um, <laughs> while the authors listed the balance with estimated dates. Similar dating schemes for the classic era, quote unquote, proliferated in subsequent publications with the end date usually around 1930 or 1940. As, as one dealer recalled, quote, in dealing, the 1940s was a real cutoff point. You didn't offer anything to anybody with a date after that, unquote. Such rules resulted in unethical behavior. One quilt now in the Indiana State Museum's collection has visible prick holes where quilting stitches, once reading December 1957, are removed. The museum's catalog record gives 1910 as its estimated date. Someone, perhaps the Amish individual who owned the quilt, or a dealer who bought it, deliberately removed this date, knowing it would fetch a better price if it were regarded as older. Interesting. Interesting. Some tomfoolery, perhaps, in the Amish quilt world. Yeah, interesting. Um, the bottom looks 3D, says Babe. Like you could just walk past the elevator, mmm, and on to the vending machine in the background. <laughs> I love it. Yes. It really does. It, it yeah, really does. That took me a yeah, yes. I was like, oh, I see it. That's the vending machine, right? That's the vending yeah. machine, and that's the little walkway. I'm in. I'm in. I want a Rice Krispie Treat and Reese's Pieces. And I'm going to put the Reese's Pieces in the Rice Krispie Treat. Okay, cool. Excellent. Okay. So, oh, my God. Okay. Okay, we're doing, we're doing Gary. Okay. So this, I'm going to read you an article from Hyperallergic about this man, Gary Tyler. And this story is incredible. And I've talked to some people who, who have worked with him over the years. Um, very cool people. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to read. So hyperallergic, uh, July 27th. Okay, this came out yesterday. Uh, no, sorry, two days ago. It's the 29th. Um, hyperallergic is a great uh, publication. They have recently switched to subscription only, so you need to subscribe to be able to read the content, which I approve of. You know, it's hard to produce this stuff, and uh, yeah, so they're they're saying it's a paywall. It's behind a paywall, um, and so yeah, so hyperallergic Jennifer Reminchik wrote this piece, and I am going to share it with you. And I, I want to say that um, Hyperallergic is a really great, uh, they cover quilts, they really do. It's an, art, it's an art blog, art website. They review shows, they talk about um, themes and art and things, and I, I really like them, you know? And because I really like them, you know, paying for their content makes sense, you know? It's same it used to be a, they used to be a print magazine, didn't they? Or Did they? I don't magazine. know. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know they definitely were. Interesting. I know I have copies of it. But oh, yeah. that's awesome. I maybe mean, they're not. Maybe they went totally online. They might have. They might have. I, yeah. I, I'm not sure, but hyper hyper allergic is like the coolest name for an art magazine. I just, but they do a great job. It's great. So you know, just like any content, like quilt nerd, hyper allergic. I mean, I don't whatever you whatever you consume uh the internet has trained us that you know it's like eh, it's free but it's yeah it's good to support the the content places that you that you love so yeah subscribe subscribe today so um okay hyper allergic artist gary tyler wrongly incarcerated for 41 years gets first solo show the sub uh the ta the uh, cut line is Tyler was put on death row at age 17 after a trial that was later deemed unconstitutional and unfair. Those are both words in quotes, unconstitutional and unfair. Okay. This is Gary, uh, by the way, in his studio preparing for his exhibition at Library Street Collective. Um, here we go. 
and this uh, she's reporting from Los Angeles. Okay, Jennifer Reminchik. At 16 years old, Gary Tyler was arrested by the police in St. Charles, Louisiana, following an incident in which he and a group of other black American students were attacked by a crowd of white people while riding a bus home from school. Desegregation had been mandated in the 1954 historic ruling Brown versus Board of Education, but 20 years later, in 1974, the white community was still resistant to integration. During this confrontation, a 13-year-old white boy named Timothy Weber was killed by a gunshot. Many witnesses, including the bus driver, said this shot came from outside the bus Tyler was riding. Inspired by a trip he had recently taken to California, where he was reportedly first exposed to the Black Panther Party and the concept of racial equality, Tyler spoke back to an officer during an ensuing investigation at the scene, considered an unwritten crime on par with tyranny or blasphemy in the rural South. Tyler was arrested, beaten, and charged with the crime as a symbolic rep representation of what happens to a Black person who steps out of line. In November 1975, he was convicted of first-degree murder by an all-white jury, sentenced to death row, and sent to Louisiana's maximum security Angola prison. His trial attracted the attention of prominent racial justice advocates, such as Rosa Parks, who said, also a quilter, by the way, who said at a 1976 rally in his support, quote, if there is any strength that I have left, I will do whatever I can to help free this young brother, unquote. In 1980, the United States Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit reversed its earlier ruling, claiming that Tyler's trial was, quote, fundamentally unfair, unquote. However, that ruling was overturned a year later, sentencing Tyler to 41 years in prison. On April 29, 2016, Tyler was finally released at the age of 57. He entered a technical guilty plea to secure his release. Because of this, he receives no reimbursement for his time in prison, nor does the state acknowledge any responsibility for this injustice, but he is free. I sat down with Tyler in his Los Angeles studio, where he had been busy working at nights uh, after his day job as lead outreach and engagement support worker for Safe Place for Youth, an organization that serves unhoused young people. A position he is particularly suited for, this job affords him the stability necessary to maintain his life and studio practice and gives him an opportunity to support youth facing a variety of issues from social and racial inequality to dysfunctional family systems and trauma. When we met, Tyler had just shipped a slew of quilted artworks in anticipation of his first solo exhibition, We Are the Willing, curated by Allison Glenn at Library Street Collective in Detroit. Hey, through September 6th. Ah, Detroit ain't so far away, interesting. Okay, here. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, an image from the show. Ray of Freedom, made in 2023, uh, depicts a Louisiana, and I don't believe that's pictured here, okay. Uh, maybe, hold on, oh yes, 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 yes. Um, Sorry, it doesn't, the caption for the photo in this article doesn't actually say, we'll, we'll see. Okay, Ray of Freedom uh, depicts a Louisiana crane species. Yeah, we're not seeing that here. And that Tyler would often see around the Angola prison grounds. Perhaps one of the most poignant aspects of this exhibition is its most obvious. A man whom the state of Louisiana once deemed so dangerous that he deserved the death penalty at 17, now uses his freedom to make quilted artworks a symbol of warmth, tenderness, and home. It is not lost on Tyler that up until his release, he has spent the entirety of his life supervised by others, his parents until the age of 16, and the state of Louisiana afterward. These past six years of freedom are the first time he has had real agency over his choices and experiences, a state he describes as catching up. While he certainly kept himself busy during his time in prison, also earning a degree in graphic design. <laughs> he earned a degree in graphic design in prison. Just note that. He had to learn some basic day-to-day -day realities we often take for granted, including paying rent or using a computer. He described his first time going to a grocery store as surreal. As a whole, 
-hmm. As a whole, the exhibition can be thought of as a self-portrait, from the symbolic butterfly quilts, as you saw earlier, uh, to the pieces in which Tyler depicts himself in the work, as in Captivity, 1974, a quilted version of a photo taken shortly after his initial arrest at the age of 16. While this is his first solo exhibition, uh, Tyler is quite familiar, uh, quite a familiar name among others who have been wrongly accused, and his reputation and image precede him. The work is his way to reclaim authorship of his story, to declare that he is an artist, not just a man, not just a man who was wrongly convicted. This is Captivity 1974, this piece. Let me zoom in. In this new free life, Tyler finds himself among the many artists who use their lived experience to shine a light on the realities of our world. In the work December 14th, 1975, he quilted a picture of himself and other men on death row at Angola. As the youngest of the group, he was taken under the wings of older incarcerated people, uh, such as Albert Woodfox, a member of the Angola Three, who served decades in Sal who served decades in solitary confinement before his conviction was overturned and he was released. Tyler remembers these mentors fondly. Quote, they helped me understand how to speak on my own behalf. When I got into prison, I had no idea what a political organization was, unquote. In that quilt, Tyler is obscured by prison bars and the dehumanizing nature of incarceration becomes palpably clear with a large number marking the cell block more easily identifiable than the person in it. In the exhibition's largest work, Remembrance, Tyler pays homage to a fellow incarcerated man and friend, Leslie Smith, depicting the two men, oh, working together outdoors. Oh, okay, here we go. I think that was that first, yeah. that first picture where that was facing. Yeah, that one, right? Yeah. We're gonna, okay. Um, this is, okay, Remembrance. Tyler pays homage to a fellow incarcerated man and friend, Leslie Smith. Depicting the two men working together outdoors, it almost feels like a historical painting. At an artist talk prior to the exhibition's opening, Tyler relayed that shortly after this picture was taken, Smith became sick, was diagnosed with AIDS, and died about a month later. This piece, like the others, is largely black and white, with a burst of blue defining the work jeans worn by the figures. Near the butterfly quilts hangs a banner that reads, Free Gary Tyler. Underneath this banner, a vitrine full of ephemera from his wrongful conviction and ultimate freedom informs the viewer of his story. Yet ultimately, the greatest power in We Are the Willing, and by extension in Tyler's actual life, lies not in the past, but in the future. I don't want people to pity me, he said. I'm interested in what I am becoming. Yeah. Um, I, so, yeah, the, um, in Quilt, QuiltCon um, Together in 2021, I did a, a, too many lectures. I did like four things. Anyway, Quilts and Mental Health was one of them. And I, I separated the uh, lecture into just different ways that quilts help people. And incarceration was one of them, or imprisonment, you know. And I found his story and put it in there. And, um, and yeah, I was talking to some folks who, who worked with him. But, uh, I mean, it's, I, I, <laughs> what he said is so, is so incredible. I don't want people to pity me. I'm interested in what I am becoming. I mean, that he, he's got a solo show. That's so cool. God. You know? It's always, it's, it's always amazing to me, because I, I like true crime. Yeah. I read a lot or listen to a lot of podcasts and read a lot mm -hmm. of stories about, um, uh, you know, convictions that were, you know, bad convictions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things like, uh, I mean, he was a child when he was convicted, you know? And they always have this attitude of like, like gratefulness, despite the fact that they've lost, I mean, this man's lost like 40 years of his life, but to be able to like turn that into this like really beautiful thing, yeah. that, that's just, that's like a testament to somebody's fortitude. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I won't go too far off on a tangent, but I mean, I think about, I've been thinking a lot about like justice and like, and, and prison, frankly, and like 
who decides? Who decides to put this man in in a cell? Like, like I, I know that sounds like a simplistic question, but it is like this sort of like philosophical question. Like, who has power and why, right? And so I was listening to some podcasts and, and stuff. And did you know the penitentiary, the Quakers, it is a Quaker idea, the penitentiary, penance, penance. Their, their sort of thought, and this is like Europe and America, whatever, is that if somebody is committing crimes in the community or if they're doing unethical things, whatever, their approach was like not that they that, that person needs to be removed from society or that, that, that society needs to be kept safe from that person, but actually that the person needs to be removed from the society because the society is like poisoning him and he needs to go and sit in a room in a penitentiary and get right with God, right? So this is like one of the pieces of the whole prison system. Fascinating. Fascinating. It was Michel Foucault. Who, Michel Foucault, who, by the way, is in the AIDS quilt because he died of AIDS. So somebody made him an AIDS quilt uh, thing. Anyway. So it's very interesting stuff. But, uh, but yeah, Gary Tyler, man. Amazing. And Detroit, I mean, through September 6th. I'd really love to go support Gary Tyler and see that show. I gotta tell you. I'm not gonna make any promises, but that'd be great. Be great. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed that. It's a it's a good it's a good story. Jill says, hot dang, I'm super angry for what's been done to him and simultaneously thrilled at what's going on now. Absolutely. Oh nice. Eva's got Eva dropped a, a, a link interview with him. I love that, Eva. That's great. Grits and butter! Hey grits and butter. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he, <laughs> this will be great. This will be great. So from that to this, you know, I like to keep things. I like to get, get stuff popping for you. Good story, right? The backwards end. The backwards end. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is this, I mean, is it a, yeah. yeah. Different worlds, man. <laughs> Different worlds. So Sterling Ruby. Anybody ever heard of him? Sterling Ruby is a dude, and he is an artist, and he is very fancy. Hey, Neflinster. Girl, you're right on time. Um, so, so Sterling Ruby is a, a fancy artist, okay? And I think he's in Los Angeles, and, and I, you know, I don't mean to throw shade. Well, you're a t you're, it's a tough act to follow, Sterling. <laughs> with the Gary Tyler. It's a tough act to follow. And the video I'm about to show is extremely pretentious. I mean, it's like, oh, I love it. I love it so much. It's great. It's great. So so I found, I, I came across a quilt by Sterling Ruby, okay? He's an artist. Well, let me tell you who he is, okay? About, about. Sterling Ruby. I think this is from his website. I, I can't remember. Sterling Ruby's work engages with, ugh, I have a fan on and it's blowing all my papers around. Okay, Sterling Ruby's work. Wow, that is really big. So this man is standing there to show you the scale of this piece. That's pretty big. That's actually really big. That's very big. <laughs> I, I didn't really totally appreciate how big this is. And by the way, it's called Quilt 7807. Interesting, Sterling Ruby. That's not him, but okay. Now that you've seen the scale of it, everybody's seen the scale of it? Pretty big, pretty big. Okay, now let's get in here. Okay, mm-hmm, yes. Um, <clears throat> Sterling Ruby's work engages with issues related to autobiography, art history, and the violence and pressures within society. Employing diverse aesthetic strategies and mediums, including sculpture, drawing, collage, ceramics, painting, and video, he examines the tensions between fluidity and stasis Expressionism and minimalism, the abject and the pristine. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Writing about art is hard. It's totally fine. Born on Bitburg Air Base, Germany, to an American father. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, he grew up on a farm in southern, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania. This becomes important. Uh, there, he encountered Amish quilt making and Pennsylvania redware pottery. Let me zoom in on the top of this. Okay, uh, the quilts and the pottery, both of which directly inspired his initial forays into garment making, soft sculpture, and ceramics. He graduated from the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, Lan Lancaster, in 1996. Oh, 
Oh, he, he received his BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. That's what I do. I invented post-its. <laughs> I went to the Art Institute of Chicago. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> followed by an MFA. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Living and working in Los Angeles. Ruby draws endless inspiration from the city's physical and conceptual landscape. Let's take a look at another quilt. Hang on. This is called, oh, well, no. This is from a show called In Warm Shroud, Kissing the Bloom Crux. <laughs> I look over at Stephanie Cake. She's like, oh. I mean, you were, it was more adorable than that. But. Well, you know, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't want to color anybody's opinion of yes. this man. Yes, yes. I don't, I don't hate these things yet. I don't know enough about them if yeah, I should yeah. them or not. Yeah. Visually, I'm like, okay, this is interesting yeah. to look at. I like this idea of, like, it's way too big to be a quilt. But, right. you know, what I don't like about his artist statement is that he starts off with autobiography being the thing <laughs> that he's expressing yeah, Right, art. right. And I'm like, that's a little bit too navel-gazy for me, dude. Yeah. Like, I don't... Yeah. It's, it's one thing to create art from your lived experience, it's yet another thing to create art as autobiography. <laughs> Are you important enough? I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> this art is my soul. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know. Okay, well, he's in Los Angeles, so that's the first thing we know about him. Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ruby draws endless inspiration, yes, from the city's physical and conceptual landscape. Okay. Um, da -da 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 Ruby's work often deals with the... Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, he launched a ready-to-wear clothing line, which is kind of interesting because he's using like scraps of canvas and textiles from his work to make clothes that are nine million dollars, uh, but they are slightly cool. Okay, so here, so so I don't know. Acorn is being weird. What is? What do I have here? Oh yeah, and there's a there's a, a catalog of his uh of this one show that he did called stoves and quilts uh and it's i can't find it i mean it's listed on Abe books but it's not available it's probably super expensive because it's like a it's like a catalog for the thing anyway but the quilts that are in this show look like the ones i just show you showed you and uh we're gonna look at a video about his work um is it his actual name i don't know hey sherlock <laughs> sherlock says i'm surprised he's not calling these tapestries or something sherlock did i say that just how you would have said it tapestries um all right let's 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 do this we haven't watched the video yet sherlock you don't know this yet uh, it's true it's true here we go here we go why did i pull that up oh right oh i forgot to put a thing on okay okay so this is, uh, it's four minutes and 38 seconds. I, we won't probably watch it all because it's not all about the quilts. Um, and I'm not gonna read you any of that because that's the script for the video, okay? Okay, so this is from Spruth, Spruth, Spruth Magers. And it's, it's, it's um, a gallery, okay? And it's uh, for the show that I believe was in, yes, 2022. And the show was called In Warm Shroud, Kissing the Bloom Crux, A Frost Window. Let me zoom in. This is the name of the show. I mean, I don't know. Like, I'm just thinking of Gary Taylor. What can I say? Gary Tyler, I'm just thinking about him. I, ju I just can't stop thinking about him, you know? And like, I, I, everybody's got their own life. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Sterling Ruby, right? He, you know, he was growing up around the, the Amish folks. I don't know. Life is a disaster. I just, I just, okay, just listen to this video. It's gonna, I, I don't know. I. It makes me very angry. All right, let's do this. Sterling Ruby has moved nimbly between mediums and disciplines, connecting art, craft, popular culture, history, philosophy, and other fields to- Hang on, I'm gonna refresh this. I don't, I, it's, I don't know what's going on. The internet's being a little I bit. mean, I hate to be the peanut gallery, but already this is being read, it's just said in like this German man's voice and- <laughs> I know, I know. It's already extolling the virtues of this person. It's, it, it, I mean, here, I, it, here's the thing. It's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you can't stand in judgment of some stuff, what do you stand for, okay? Like, what do you stand for? But, and, and I, I stand for not this. Yeah, exactly. I stand against this. 
Well, okay. Let's just see. Now, internet, don't don't be weird. What are you being weird? Between mediums and disciplines. Okay, that's better. Connecting art, craft, popular culture, history, philosophy, and other fields to produce a rich compendium of objects and images. A group of new window paintings features deep blue hues that shift to lush turquoise via gestural white highlights, intimating the movement of water across the canvas surface, caught between liquid and Get frozen. Get to the quilt! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, oh, there's a quilt. Okay, I got it. The painting's tactility and everyday motives hey, generate a space of intimacy, domesticity, and warmth. Despite the icy tonalities. Okay, okay, sorry. I, okay, come on. Here we go. Ruby's new quilts expand the artist's play with scale to monumental proportions. In a suit of wall based works that connect to his longtime engagement with fabric and assemblage. The quills embody warmth, touch, and the handmaid. Wee! Wee! <laughs> Wee! Look at my colored skeins of tangled yarn. Wee! Striped elastic bands Sorry. designed by the artist. Collaged images and a variety of treated and patterned fabrics are sutured together in rectangular compositions, bisected horizontally and vertically. Th that's what that's what killed me. Bisected horizontally and vertically. Like, oh, oh my, oh my God. He, oh my God. He put them by. He put them high, horizontally and vertically. Well, I mean. <laughs> is always too loud. Anyway, this is called Quilt 7821. I don't know, Sterling. I mean, you're talented. You're doing art. You know, I, I dig it. I actually do, you know? But it's just that thing. It's that thing. It's yeah, that thing. You know, that's the thing. I, I actually like his work. I do too. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, visually, I think it's really interesting. And I, I, I like too. this, like, I wouldn't call them quilts. I mean, they're like fabric. Somebody else said fabric collage. Yeah. I think it was Lisa. Fabric collage, really. But yeah, I mean, I get it. Um, I just, I don't like how he's he's written about himself or other people have written about me. That's yeah. a very art world. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the thing. And okay, so then they go into the, the ceramic stuff. Um, I, I like his work, too. I, I do. I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. And I mean, whenever you've got something that's really big... I'm impressed. I mean, it's a spectacle, right? It's this spectacle. Um, and so I'm into it. Um, it's ambitious. It's cool. There's gingham in this this particular quilt. I like how, do you see on the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you know that's that's Betz's butt. I mean, she's always there, like, like just taking off. I really like that she's here in this video. <laughs> she's like, do 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 Betz is like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... So, yeah. So, anyway, that's Sterling Ruby. And, uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time to, to look at what's going on. And, I mean, I guess that's sort of like, you know, the uh, the Amish quilt, the Betts Ramsey quilt, Gary Tyler, and Sterling Ruby. Like, this is, this is a quilt nerd classic, man. It's like, what is the art world doing? What is the quilt? What does it mean in people's lives? I mean, I don't really need to remind people. If people watch the show, you know that. But, like, you know, if anybody's new, it's like... The world, basically we just look at people here and we look at art. That's what we do. And uh, and we look at it together because I don't want to look at this stuff on my own. Are you kidding me? Um, I forgot, whoops, you don't need to see my little thing. We're gonna look at some, um, we're gonna look at some red and whites, but hold on now, there's one more thing. Cake, uh, cake break? Okay, we're gonna do a cake break and then we're gonna come back with, um, we're gonna come back with, with some red and white quilts because you know what? I mean, there is, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you something right now. 
You ready for this? I don't know if you're ready. Hey, we've never really, we've never really talked about the Infinite Variety exhibit. And there's the second edition of the book that's out now. And I have a surprise. I have a surprise for anniversary week, which is coming up after next, next week. Next week is dark. And then the week after is anniversary week. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to take a cake break. And Cake's going to talk to us about Dunton and whatever she wants to talk to us about because it's a cake break. Okay. So, so then we'll be back to look at some uh, red and whites. Okay. Yeah, I love red too. It's, yeah, it's a good time. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're going to do that. And we're going to do this, and I'll be right back. Take it away, Cake. So, hi, you guys. I came in here all fired up. <laughs> I just get Mary all fired up about my, my Barbie uh, anger experience. Yep. <laughs> I, you know, I she told me that her sister didn't love Barbie, the movie, and... You know, I was like, huh, okay. And I thought I'd read a few things. So I read a few things and I was led, unfortunately, and I'm not, I do not want to get political here, guys. I'm not trying to do that. But I uh, was led to the 43 minute meltdown that Ben Shapiro had about the Barbie movie. <laughs> and <laughs> all I can say right now is if you're a woman, don't listen to it because you'll be angry, very angry. Um, I, I just like, it boggled, boggled, boggled my mind. So anyway, I was all cray, cray, crazy about that. Um, but I wanted to read something to you guys. And I'm going to read something to you, and I want you to guess who wrote it. Now, if you have listened to my stream recently, you're not allowed to answer. <laughs> because you will know who wrote it. So I'm going to read this to you. Uh, so city women, surrounded by many enticing distractions, are turning more and more to patchwork as a fascinating yet nerve-soothing occupation. Not only is there a sort of companionship between the maker and the quilt, but there is also the great benefit derived from having found a new interest in life, something worthwhile that can be built up by one's own efforts. So what do you guys think about that? Who would you guess wrote that little ditty? And while I wait for you to ponder that, um, yeah, I will, uh, I will say, don't let me forget you guys. We're doing a book giveaway tonight. It is time for the July giveaway. I can't believe it. Um, this month has gone by so, so fast. The Flintsters guessing Dutton. Quack, quack, cat guessing Dutton. Sounds pretty Duttony, doesn't it? Did you just say Duttony? Duttony? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to worry that people are just going to think I'm crazy. You know, because, like, I, 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 can, I, can, I can insert Dr. Dutton into any conversation now. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same. I mean, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Robin's like, who else would have said it? Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Good call, Robin. Exactly. Oh, oh Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say it. No, it's not Oprah. You guys, it's Marie Webster. Oh. This is in the last chapter of Marie Webster's book that she wrote in 1915. And Dr. Dunton, um, he credits Marie Webster with really getting him interested in quilt history. And there's kind of always been this like, you know, yeah, how did, how did Dunton get here? You know, like how did he get from psychology? And I've, I've learned a whole lot more about what his work was before he was doing all the quilt stuff it's really interesting um but you know wh where did how did he go from psychiatry to quilts you know and uh yeah that's like that's it <laughs> he was already interested in the book book you know and, and my theory is that this book was very well um advertised at the time in in all the papers he read and um you know i think he picked the book up just saying like thinking like oh that's interesting and then he read the book and he got to that little blurb and yeah oh my goodness bridgewater what what's going on holy holy moses okay bridgewater has got this whole cadre of stephanie's <laughs> a cadre of stephanie's 
Do you call it a, a not a murder of Stephanie's, a, a, oh. uh, a flock? What would a group of us be called? A, a flock, a pod. I'm trying to think of all the awesome, like, yeah. A clutch, a clutch of Stephanie's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've been immersed in too much Dutton, like, gluttony. <laughs> a dazzle of Stephanie's. I like Ooh, that. Oh, that's I good. Like that. That's good. I like yeah. the way you think, Sherlock. <laughs> Uh, is it a city in Italy? Possibly. It's the the, the Duchy of Dutton-y. <laughs> it's a, It sounds like French to me, like, you know. Um, Actually, yeah. Dunton, I think, is like Old English for uh. Hill. Hill is the Dun, oh. and Ton is Town. He actually has very cute little book plates that have this illustrated. That Interesting. Have, um, his and Edna's name on it. Hmm. Interesting. A clutch. <laughs> a clutch. A clutch of a clutch of Stephanie's. I like that. I think I'm gonna go with Dazzle. I like that. Yeah. Thank you, Sherlock. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Okay, let me So I yeah. just shared like really, really important intel guys. So don't go spouting this because I do need the people that are gonna attend my EQSG um That's right. seminar <laughs> presentation to think that they are the first ones to hear this. <laughs> Although I think anyone who's actually read Marie Webster's book should have probably picked up on it, but take nothing for granted. Um, it's a great quote. I love I love it when people talk about quilts in context of the city. You know, it's a it's a good thing because mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's not just the country ladies, right? Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Cake. That was great. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so let's let's talk about some stuff. Or do you did you talk about what you needed to talk about or you know, did you, you can have more time. Yeah. You can have as much time as you want. <laughs> no, I mean, really that's, that's really what okay. I had to say. I mean, okay. like, you need me to start half dancing. I can't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not but ready. I'm not ready. I will say, Eva, in case you're not watching the chat, Eva has yes. kindly reminded everyone yes. that Kenny is streaming on oh. um, Sundays and I'm streaming on Mondays now. Okay. And S Kenny is Sunday at what time? 10 p.m. 10, uh, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. He's going yeah, to be on think, yeah. Eastern? I think she's saying 10 p.m. Eastern because he's, I think he streams earlier than that, his time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and you're at 2 p.m. E Eastern. Eastern, yeah. Okay. Yep. Sundays and Mondays. So basically, y'all have content. Y'all have content. And if anybody else wants to start a, a live stream, you should. It's the way of the future. Either I'm way ahead or I'm, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to be, a, no, it is obviously a thing. Anyway, um, oh yeah. Hey, Dee Marie. Yeah, Dee Marie, listen, if you would start a stream, that would be awesome. What would it be? What would it be on? I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you. I can't, I can't do the work for you. Come on. <laughs> okay, so before we get to the red and white, a really quick, a really quick quilt. Um, because this was the second half of my uh, Barbieheimer thing. I know, I know, I know. I just wanna be a part of the culture for once in my life and not be out of step with it. God. Anyway, so this this is a quilt that um, is, uh, I'm gonna hide the chat really quick because I, I had to open it in a different program. Hang on one second. Um, uh, so, so, you know, I showed the doll quilt, right? That was my little Barbie nod. And then this quilt is um, is is in the. I have to show you this. Hold on, you have to you have to see have to see this. This is in the Museum of New, New Zealand, Te Papa Tongariwa, and the Museum of New England, uh, New Zealand. Sorry, the Museum of New Zealand uh, is very cool. Steph, I'm gonna put this. Uh, sorry, I didn't put this in the in the Slack for you to share. Actually, actually, I can share it because I'm logged into the chat. I'll just I do it. I think you did, didn't you? Did I? Oh, I did, no, I did. Yes, 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 did. yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank you so much. So so it's a very, uh, great, it's a great website. It's so cool. And they are working, the museum is working with the tribes there in New Zealand to make this a museum that is of the people, <laughs> all of the people, which is terrific so 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 that's neat and i just wanted to show you the uh the website it's uh it's very cool anyway this quilt is in their collection and it is about nuclear disarmament 
And here's what I can tell you about it. This quilt protests against, so, so this is the Oppenheimer part, right? Obviously this is the Oppenheimer part. This quilt protests against nuclear weapons testing in the Pacific. The panels depict Pacific and New Zealand plants, animals, and nuclear free motifs. The lower border in Samoan translates as International Year of World's Indigenous People, which had taken place the previous year in 1993. So it's made in 1994, okay? So the Samoan down there translates to International Year of World's Indigenous People. Joanne Baines designed and directed the making of the quilt from 1993 to 1994 for the World Court Project in 1994. The World Court Project was initiated by New Zealanders who took the issue of whether nuclear weapons are legal, oh wow, to the International Court of Justice for an advisory opinion. Well, uh, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> nuclear weapons are illegal. That is very badass. I'm sorry, that's just like really cool. The panels depict a range of Pacific and New Zealand plants, animals, and nuclear issues. The Rainbow Warrior is acknowledged top right. Rainbow Warrior, wow, that's cool. Um, other issues included in the quilt are apartheid, United States military bases, pollution, and extinction. The two largest central blocks are Rarotongan Tiveve, Tiveve, we know that, we don't know, we know, we know Tiveve, um, made by Macarena George. Joanne Baines made the borders and some of the panels so, okay, so those are the two big blocks. Those are, oh, I love this block. Look at that block, that's so great. Ooh, it's so good. I love it so much. Oh, and look at this block, the World Court Project. Oh man, that is some, that is dynamite design. That is terrific, I think. I mean, the dove with the scales, brilliant, brilliant. That's, that's great too. Um, Anyway, uh, let's see, the, Joanne Baines made the borders and some of the panels and the World Court Project with the dove and added further detailing such as painting, embroidery, and uh, applique and badges. Secondary school art students and members of the Auckland Patchworkers and Quilt Makers Guilds also contributed. The soft, tactile, colorful, and visual qualities of quilts such as this can make them non-threatening but effective protest objects translatable across cultures. The quilt toured nationally and internationally and displayed at key conferences. Uh, thousands of cards depicting it were sold to fundraise for the World Court Project. In October 1995, it was displayed at the World Court in The Hague in the Netherlands when New Zealand's declarations of public conscience were presented. It was also displayed at an international peace conference in New York in the United States in 95. Right? independent and nuclear free Pacific. God, yeah. Well, you know, the Pacific would, I would certainly listen to what they had to say about it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so there you go. Okay. We did it. We were part of the cultural moment and that quilt rules. All right. So the red and white exhibit, what you're looking at, what you're looking at is down, you're looking at a bird's eye view of an exhibit that took place in 2011 in New York City uh, at the Broadway Armory. And it was called Infinite Variety. Well, what, what, what was it actually called? Hang on. Red and White Quilts, Infinite Variety. And it was presented, this exhibit was presented by the American Folk Art Museum, who we love very much. I wanted to make a donation to the American Folk Art Museum and I never really put that into play. So that is bad because they were so gracious to us. So maybe during anniversary week, we will do a little pass the, pass the hat for the American Folk Art Museum because yeah, there's a lot going on and I would like to give them a little something. Um, so yeah, so just, yeah. Anyway, just be, 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 be aware that like, yeah, we should do something for them. Okay, oh, sorry. Um, all right, so, so what is this all about? Well, there's a book 
uh, about the exhibit. <clears throat> okay, it was a very big deal. And so I'm going to read to you a little bit of this book, and uh, just a little, and I'm going to um, show you some images from this exhibit. Because if you were a quilt nerd, you got to know about this. This is like a very big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a huge, huge deal um, in American quilt culture. Okay? Okay. <sighs> Martha Stewart wrote the introduction to this book. Well, one of them. There's lots of introductions. Carolyn Ducey, a dear friend of mine, wrote the, well, another introduction to it. Um, because the Red and White Quilt Exhibit now lives at the American Folk Art, oh, sorry, at the International Quilt Museum. It lives in Lincoln. The quilts live in Lincoln. And, by the way, on the board, I'm giving all the, all the stuff, Deborah Bingham, who is Joanna Rose's niece, is on the board, and she is delightful. I do. Deborah Bingham, every once in a while, I think you, know, you tune in. We talked about this. I love you. I think you're wonderful. I love spending time with you in Lincoln, and I just think you're great. Um, so there you go. <laughs> Deal with it. Um, so, so I'm going to read to you, uh, I guess, a little bit. Well, why don't I read to you Martha Stewart's inter? Why not? I'll read Martha Stewart, right? It's, it's a page. So this, so this book about the show, is it's very thick, OK? because there are 653 quilts in this exhibit. And I'm going to show you another image from the show. Hang on. We'll come back. We'll come back. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, my god. No, Fonz. Mm, sorry, you're getting a preview. You know what? There. Sorry. <laughs> we'll go back. We'll go back to it all. Hey, Susan R. Michael. Uh, yes, we, I would love to petition them to redo this exhibit. So. So, so Joanna S. Rose was it was one woman's collection, okay? Joanna S. Rose, and this is in the Broadway Armory, okay, in New York City. And I'm going to read you Martha Stewart's introduction. But first, I thought this picture from the book, and the book has wonderful images in it, wonderful, and it has pictures of all of the quilts, all of the quilts. So the book was published first, you know, after the exhibit, and and you and then you couldn't get it. Okay, and we don't have a link, or maybe we, do we have a link, an A-Books link? Okay, we do. We do have a link, and, but for a while, this book was very hard to get because it was out of print, but it was, you know, people want it, so it wasn't like $5 on A-Books. But then the Quilt Museum, the Lincoln International Quilt Museum, uh, republished it. There's so, so I, I'm holding the second edition, which, and I'm very glad that I have it, because um, mine got water damage and it was moldy. I, yes, and I, I, had to I had to throw it out. Oh my God, throwing a book away, it's terrible. I love this woman. I was scanning this image and I just, she's so great. She's like, oh my God. And she's got a little kerchief on her head like my grandma used to wear, I love it. Anyway, so <clears throat> I was quite ill when this show was on and so I couldn't go. But my mom and my sister Hannah went and they said it was just, I mean, these look like neon signs, do they not? I mean, they look like they're computer images. It's crazy. And the show was up for like six days or something. But they had these quilts spiraling up to the sky, which is what you're seeing here. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I, I did like tried so hard there. So you're seeing this bird's eye view. Uh, of these quilts being spiraled up to the sky. All right, six days. I, I believe so, Sherlock. <clears throat> they seem to glow, Niflinster, exactly. So this is what Martha Stewart has to say. Let's take a look at this image finally. Martha Stewart. <clears throat> I met the one, no, I'm not gonna read it in her voice. I don't know how to do Martha Stewart. Anyway, Martha Stewart says, I met the wonderful and matriarchal Joanna S. Rose more than 20 years ago on Lily Pond Lane on the eastern end of Long Island. <laughs> Cake just went like this. <laughs> God bless you, Martha Stewart. <clears throat> um, she and her husband lived across the street from me. Oh, for heaven's sakes! And I was introduced to her larger than life personality. I'm reading between the lines. <laughs> Joanna S. Rose. She was probably, I mean, she was, I don't know. She's probably a handful. I don't know. Now if Deborah's watching, I'm going to feel bad. But she's probably agree with me. I don't know. I never, I never met 
her. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mary, stop talking. Read Martha's words, not don't say yours. She and her husband lived across the street from me, and I was introduced to her larger-than-life personality, her interest in folk art, and her astute gathering instinct during visits to her shingle-style East Hampton, East Hampton Be Beach Cottage <laughs> filled with American art. Okay? But I had no idea that Joanna was a collector and that she was amassing one of the most... One of the most uh, 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 um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. collections of quilts ever assembled. This is a picture of people taking pictures of the quilts in the book, and I, I just love it. This this book is full of wonderful pictures like this, like ephemera and people doing this stuff. So. Uh, Joanna herself admits that she did not know how many red and whites she bought, but I do believe this brilliant woman had a good idea that she was putting together a unique collection that would one day be valued for its historical and social significance, its variety, and its unifying theme, red and white. When I walked into the Park Avenue Armory with my television crew to record the Infinite Variety Quilt Exhibition for my daily show, what? I didn't know that existed. Um, I, my colleagues and I stared in disbelief. at the vastness of the collection, the originality and cleverness uh, of the display, and the joyous nature of the entire undertaking. We marveled at the genius of the idea and the genius and expertness of the women who labored for weeks and months to sew each and every one of the 653 American quilts over a period of 300 years. And we were astonished that also, although some of the quilts were based on similar themes, let's look at some of these quilts. You, can you believe this one? Look at this one. And we were astonished that although some of the quilts were based on similar themes, not one quilt was really anything like another one. Each was differentiated by fabric, stitchery, uh, number of pieces, color, design, size. Each was beautiful in its own personal way, a reflection of the woman or women who labored with needle and thread and scissors and cloth to create original and beautiful and meaningful everyday covers for someone's bed. As I study the image in this book, I keep thinking of M.C. Escher, the Dutch graphic artist who is known for his mathematically inspired woodcuts and lithographs. He explored infinity, architecture, intricacy, and impossible reality, quote unquote, along with order and simplicity, much like the designers of the patterns displayed on these red and white masterpieces. Uh, there's not too much left, but I just wanna say, like, I've never seen an actual brick quilt until I saw this one. Like, you know, there's, like, the brick sort of abstraction, but, like... The... I have this book, yeah. and I think that might be my favorite quote. It's, it's pretty great, right? I was like, well, I gotta get a, one of the brick ones. This, and this is just, I mean, what? What? Like, oh, my God. Like, that's... that. Uh, I mean, ugh, I, I don't know. Like, like, the quilting? Like, I think what we're looking at... Let me... I think she quilted in the ditch on every log. I think, th I mean, right, like, that's what it looks like to me. That's what it looks like to me. Because it's so, text yeah. right? Yeah, that is what it looks like, yeah. It's got to be that. It's got to be that. I mean, it's just so puffy in that way. And then she's got these checkerboards. And what is that? One, two, three. That's a seven... That's a seven deep border and a checkerboard. Like, I think girl was like working through something. Like she was like trying to figure something out. Is it pleated? Susan asks. Interesting. It's bonkers. Molly also dead. I, 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 I don't, maybe it's washed. I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's, it's really, there's a lot going on here. But wait a minute, wait a minute. The borders are not quilted. She totally gave up. She was like, yeah, I have to play this. And there was no monkey business about it either. There wasn't. There wasn't. She just quit. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Those borders are not quilted. What, do you think they were added later? I don't know. When you said that, I'm trying to, like, kind of wrap my head around that. Mm. Like, I mean, is there batting in there? There's got to be batting in here in the ma in the main yeah. log cabin. I mean, there, there obviously is. I mean, you can see evidence that it's there. Right. Guess, but, yeah, that's really weird. Oh, it's crazy. Oh. I'll get back to Martha Stewart here in a second, but look at some of these. So th th there are some with text. 
I've got, I, I scanned two of them with, with text. Charles and Cornelia. Isn't this wonderful? All homage to our God supreme and love to each created one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me read that again. Charles and Cornelia. All homage to our God supreme. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, don't I have that? Don't I have a dun, dun, dun? I, I used to, didn't I? <coughs> I got that. All right. Um, and love to each created one. Your very affectionate mother. I don't know what that is. It looks like an underscore to me. I don't think it is. I think it's probably not an underscore. <laughs> your very affectionate like mother. The, the yeah. double M dash. Yeah, the double M dash, exactly. Or like your very affectionate mother, hashtag Lavinia Rose. Cortlandville, uh, oh, Cortlandville, New York, December 6, 1856. Um, it's great. It's great. Look at these letters. No backwards N, but that's okay. I love quilts like this. I do too. I do too. Even the ones that are religious and, you know, like, oh, yeah. Because, you know, it's somebody that spells so strongly yes. that they had to, like, oh. write it down on a quilt. You know? Look at that shit. Exactly. And, I mean, look, I've, I've done some applique lettering. Cake, you've done it. I mean, this is commitment. Like, People think quilters are patient. We talk about this all the time, you know, not really. We look for ways to do stuff fast so we can make more quilts, you know? It's like, we really like it. But I mean, to, to plan out this quilt and cut every freaking letter and period, you have got to want to do this. You gotta be in it. You gotta do the most to get this done. Here's another one. Here's another one. Daniel and Amarilla. The Bible chart keep in full view. Twill lead you safe the journey through. Love to you and yours, mother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody's making the point yeah. that it's like, you know, your mom or your mother-in-law's eyes are on oh, you. It, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> We've we've looked at it before. We've probably looked at it so many times. There's this one wedding quilt. It's at the museum in Lincoln, and it's like, you know, listen here as I foretell, like, the dangers that you... And it's like, oh, my God, like, have a good time in your honeymoon. Look at the quilting on this, though. It's nuts. It's so nice. It's so nice. It's just... It's so intricate. And I love this red, this little red calico. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm. Yep, Lillian saw it. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, and I really like this font. You know, twill lead you safe the journey through. Hmm, lovely. What if it's like? Oh, oh, oh! Actually, you know what? That's what somebody should do. Here, this is what you should do. You should make a wedding quilt. Maybe it isn't a wedding quilt. Maybe it's just a text quilt. You should be like. I don't know. So the Bible chart, keep in full view, twill lead you safe the journey through. Gucci! Stephanie Cake. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Stephanie Cake. Sorry. I'm just saying we need to update these things, okay? All right, Martha, take us home here. here I've got three more to show you, though. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Odd fellows. Oh, and they don't have dates on these quilts, but they're all like 19th century, maybe, maybe earlier, you know. Um, oh, sorry, maybe 20th century. Oh, goodness me. Okay, um, early 20th century, but I don't think they're, you know, you can tell. You can tell. They're mostly, you know, early 20th, late 19th, okay? I love a heart and hand. Who doesn't love a heart and hand? Okay. Uh, she's talking about M.C. Escher, right? Comparing it to the work of a man, it's totally fine. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Polyhedra, geometric distortion, and infinite symmetry on a two dimensional plane were not foreign concepts to the makers of these quilts. I also think of. <coughs> Victor Vassarelli, the Hungarian French artist, who was a leader of the op art movement, in which optical illusion and geometric abstract art result in complex and sometimes endless permutations of geometric forms within a strict color and form palette, not unlike many of the quilts illustrated in the pages of this book. Oh, for God and the art of constructivist Joseph Albers. Three, 
three dudes. I mean, I'm just saying, if you ever write anything, it is true. It is true. It is true. We have references. People make patterns. Human beings are the same. They're totally fine. But push yourself. This is just me. This is my opinion. My opinion. You can totally disagree with me and you can think that I'm terrible for having this opinion. It's totally fine. It's okay. Just push yourself to compare things to things that people don't compare things to. Like, like compare quilts to, I don't know, something other than Joseph Albers. Okay. Um, I mean, it's been done. That's the thing. It was, it's very good to do, but it's been done. So do something else. You know, that's all I'm saying. I try to, I mean, I want to push myself to do it. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. All right. This is amazing. This quilt, it's called Race Horses. Wait a minute. Page 290. Yeah, they don't have dates on the quilts in this book. So I can't tell you when it was made. And I, I, there's nothing else about it. But you know, you can't blame them because they photographed every one of the quilts. All of the quilts are in this book. Look at this look at this it's got like unicorns and like well i guess they're racehorses but they look like they have horns to me isn't it marvelous oh it's so wonderful with the swans looks very british to me i mean i think it looks like look palo alto the little horses have names All right um okay da, 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 da. congratulations to joanna rose and congratulations to each and every one of the hands and minds of the women who labored for untold hours over quilting frames, often in candlelight, wrong, she's wrong, to sew for us this incredible array of American optimism all in red and white. So, I mean, reading to you the Martha Stewart introduction, it was kind of fun, but, you know, reading about the actual exhibit is, is cool, is cool. So you should, you know, get this book. And what I was going to tell you is that for anniversary week, we are going to draw subscribers subscribers only i have a brand new copy of this book in shrink wrap and we're gonna draw and somebody's gonna get it could be you i don't know who it's gonna be but it could be you and uh yeah this one right here i mean this is my copy but i'm gonna give you a fancy one that's not been manhandled uh an anniversary week is just what it sounds like um Quilt Nerd will be two years old. Two years old. Two. Two. I've been doing this. I've been doing it. We've been doing 24 it. 24 months. 24 months. That's right. That's right. And this so. show is old enough to pick its nose, they yeah. eat solid foods, and talk back. Yes. 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 And like, I have to put a baby gate up now. <laughs> or maybe one's been up. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. And like. Anniversary Week will have fun things. It'll be it'll be fun things, and there'll be extra streams or at least a, a, something. There'll be some there'll be giveaways, and they there will be just special things, special things for you, and uh, maybe we'll celebrate in all kinds of ways. Um, I've been feeling a bit under the weather, uh, I have to say. So so some of the Anniversary Week things will just be a surprise, <laughs> um, rather than announcing them ahead of time because I, I haven't been feeling terribly well. But um, but next week we're off, you know. We have the we have the week and i'm going to wisconsin i'm going to wee wee because my aunt who passed away in december there is a memorial service and so rather than it really being a week off it's a week where i'm traveling and going to memorial service but it's a good thing see some family uh make merry hopefully i mean you know that kind of making merry where you're together with people and anyway um so but the week after that my birthday is on august 6th so i will be here in Chicago, and then on Tuesday the eighth, um, we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun, and there'll be there will be at least one bonus stream. So make sure your notifications are turned on, and you're following along. And I don't do social media, and I I had sort of reckoning the other day. I was like, I always think about it. I'm always thinking about it. You got to do it. You got to do it. What's your problem? You got to do it. You got to do social media. I don't have to. <laughs> I don't think I can. So. If I did, who knows what year two would look like, but can't do it, y'all. I'd just rather hang out with you. So if you know somebody who would like quilt fold, tell them to, tell them to come by because <laughs> I ain't posting about it. Um, anyway, it's our little corner of the internet. Um, but anyway, anniversary week starts uh, August 7th, and it's right after my birthday. And that's kind of awesome. I love this show. 
with you. Uh, yeah, I like this quilt. <laughs> That's all. I just really like it. Oh, but there's a surprise. There's a surprise for this quilt. This quilt is... What is a year anyway? Thank you, Eva. This quilt has its uh, has a pillowcase with it. That's a little pillow sham with pet with prairie points. Isn't that cute? I absolutely love this quilt. It is and this little pillow sham. Right, and we've seen this style. Like like this. It looks like a little. What is this little? I mean, it's a kitty, which is amazing. Is that like a, a ping pong paddle or like a bladder of some kind? I don't know, but it is divine, right? You know, we were, was it, was it Tuesday that we mentioned Adita Sitar? I think we might have yes, mentioned Yes, yes, her, yes, yes. Yeah. She has a quilt pattern that, I mean, it's not exactly like this, yeah. but it reminds me of this because it's like, it's just all these shapes of things, like cats and dogs and anchors and a whale and man and woman, like all this stuff, and it reminds me of this, and it's just so charming. It, and, it, yeah. It's wonderful. And, like, th that's not easy. The little points, like points like that, like, ooh. Not not easy, but yeah, it's just a, a, it's like a confetti of shapes, and this is a very like sort of Hawaiian Pacific, right? Pacific, uh, beautiful medallion almost. It's 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 remarkable. It's really really great. Wow wow. Um, it looks like the thing a tattoo shop would have on the wall for customers to pick their design from. It totally does. Totally yes. Totally Absolutely. does. <laughs> Wine bottle gourd. I love it. Um, so, ooh, Quilt Nerd bookmarks to QuiltCon. Interesting. A good idea. A fine idea. Onion bottle, Bridgewater, you're hilarious. Charm bracelet. Yes, Qua Qua. Um, okay, everybody. So that is the show tonight. I, yeah, I have not been feeling terribly, terribly well. So I am going to, uh, oh, we have a giveaway though. We have a giveaway. We have a giveaway because we do a giveaway every month. Every month we do a giveaway, and I, uh, I've i got a lot of stuff to mail. Wow, do I have a lot of stuff to mail. So, uh, yeah, giveaway stuff is going to be going out this week, believe me, because it's, yeah, it's got to happen. If you win the giveaway, you have got to email quiltnerdshow at gmail.com to get your, you got to give us your address, because if we don't have your address, we can't uh, send you the thing. And if you win, by the way, and you don't want to, like, claim your thing, Listen, sometimes the lurkers don't want to be, they just want to keep a low profile. I get that. I get it. But if you don't give us your address, like within like two months, I think we got to throw your giveaway item back into the pot. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I think so. Okay. You know, and like, I, I, I totally agree with you. Like, I know people that are yeah. just like, I don't even want to reach out. Yeah. I just want to, mm -hmm. I get that. That's cool. I mean, yeah, I, I, I always wonder if it's an ex-boyfriend. Yeah. You know, if there's an ex-boyfriend watching and it's like, I'm not, I don't want to book. I'm, I'm just, I'm not outing myself. exactly. Like I just, I just come here because I'm still in love with Mary. No, I'm kidding. No, they just want to check up on me. I don't know. That's totally ridiculous. All right. I got to grab a giveaway book. Hang on. The giveaway book. Eva, just, just shoe on it. Just shoe. Go shoe, shoe. It'll go away. What's Eva doing? Uh, there's a moth. Oh, yeah. They've really been active. Yeah, my cats. I just leave them for my cats. They, it, they, they, they are very entertained by, you know, all the summer bugs. I moved offices. I'm in a new office. I put the thing over here. into an office that has um, a downstairs and so she has to go down there and like turn a corner and I'm just kidding. <laughs>
there were a few packages waiting for me and um, thank you very much and I can't really talk about it because I might begin to cry but several people sent some stuff from the, the wish list and um, yeah you will be you will be thanked you will be thanked thank you very 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 much yeah <clears throat> thank you very much okay I don't I don't know if I if I keep going I'll just like embarrass myself okay so thank you very much and uh, you will be hearing from me okay so the giveaway the giveaway this month what will it be well the quilt engagement calendar from 1979 the year of my birth the year of my birth 1979 there are really and it's unused okay did i write one thing in here <laughs> it has all of Marianne Fawn. It has all of Marianne Fawn's appointments from 19. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mom's like, make a pie, you know, meet with Liz Porter? Question mark. Yeah, exactly. Um, there are wonder. If you don't know what the engagement calendar is, we've talked about it before. I mean, I really think. Oh God, look at this. Ugh. Ugh. Like the pictures are so so good. I think quilt folk should produce the engagement calendar again i mean i know people use their phone but you know i'm a paypal gal yeah you know i have a few of those and they they really did such a nice job with those they're so great yeah i mean they're just really well photographed quilts yes they are i mean it's as high res as it got in 1979 they are just i mean just page after page or there's a quilt for every week obviously and they're, they're just delicious. They're delicious quilts. And I was born in 1979. And, uh, and, and look at that cover, it's so classy. I just love it. So you will get that. And you will also get, not that one, just because it's not, I don't want, it's, this is better. Um, how to make an Amish quilt, because we've been talking about this. We've been talking about, because a couple weeks ago, you know, we looked at the, or last week, we looked at that wonderful Amish quilt on the bed. You remember with, I mean, this, oh, and then tonight was the Amish quilt. So, so this is uh, Amish quilt patterns, more than 80 patterns from the Quilting Heartland of America. Not only does this book have really fabulous pictures of Amish quilts, it's got some history. Oh, it's got history. It's great. It's really, it's really a great quilt and, I mean, a great book. And it has... Let's look at these little they're just running around they're just running around whoa they're ice skating anyway the patterns are good i mean it's a little bit older oh, those are so great uh it's a little bit older you know they're going to talk about templates and stuff you might be able to find other ways to to make to make the things but anyway it's a great book so you get them both you get them both so stephanie cake the random thing <laughs> I love that I so that much. I thought that might sound funnier than uh, that fake uh, uh, bingo hopper thing that yeah. I tried to do. No, it's, it, please always do this. Beep, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and our winner is Jerome Please, and I'm pretty sure they're here. Who is it? It's Mark Wesley. Mark Wesley! Mark Wesley, way to go! You won! Mark, you won. You're going to have this wonderful thing. You're going to have that wonderful thing, and you're going to have this wonderful thing. And I'll put quilt nerd book plates in both of them. How about that? Do I do that every time? I'm pretty sure I do. I don't know, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. If I never did it before, it begins now. Um, Mark Wesley, I'm so glad. That's so great. Here's a little champagne. Yeah, that's right. Mark Wesley, you have been a quilt nerd for a good while. And that That's is. That's what I was gonna say. I think Mark Wesley's kind of one of the OGs. Yeah, you're an OG for sure. You're an OG for sure, and you're not a lurker. You you come you come you 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 drop you drop by you, say hello to the Mater D. You, yeah. I oh oh oh. I just watched uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, last night. I needed I needed a movie that was. I don't know. I, I just, and it's so good. Jane Russell and, and I don't know. I guess that's why I thought of Mark, Mark Wesley just kind of coming in and being sort of debonair and then, you know, leaving again. But Marilyn Monroe. Oh my God. But Jane Russell. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> that movie, it slaps as the kid, kids would say. All right. Mark Wesley, 
very good job. And uh, y'all, hey, Sean, I'm Ishra. Hi. Um, yeah, Mark Wesley, you need that? Me too. I need to send you uh, a nice little package uh, with some love and congratulations. Thank you to the people who are so generous to the show and to the vibes. And thank you to Stephanie Cake, uh, who has been a gift to the show in ways that just can't, are hard to describe. This show is a gift to me, Mary. Oh, yes. It is. And I think a lot of us feel that way. I am very glad. I am very glad that you feel that way. And uh, yeah, I mean, whoa. We, we have a thing <laughs> and it's pretty, it's pretty great. So um, take care y'all, I will see you, I will be, yes, I will be off next week and then the week after that we'll have surprises and things. So yeah, thanks Cake, thanks Robin, thank you Susanna. I'll see y'all a week after next. Hey Kay, okay, lurking, lurking. Bye y'all.